They're at your house. Yeah, this guy, the patient came in with cellulitis, infection, he's diabetic, and a whole host of other things. So as you guys know, the metabolic diseases, he's immunocompromised, he's neuropathic. So one of the things he didn't realize is, I'm not having pain. So his foot is swollen, red hot. I'm okay. And he thinks he's okay. Wife is looking at him like, you're about to lose your leg. Your foot is swollen. And he's still puffing and blah, blah, I don't want to go, blah, blah, blah. But also, you got to remember with the diabetes, he is neuropathic again. So he's not feeling anything. Mm -hmm. Now he's got the eyesight because, you know, it's systemic. He can't really see very well. So he doesn't know he has a problem or doesn't think he has a problem. I'm like most people, we blow things off. Oh, it's okay. It's not a problem. So when she saw she brought him in, he got, to, he got into the emergency room. He's tachycardic now. He's, you know, Heart rate is going crazy. Maybe she increased that as well. To try to <laughs> oh, shut up. To go so now he's panicking. You know, blood, you know, blood sugar is up out of, you know, 500. Um, way up the over in the 500 range. A1, A1C, elevated, everything. You know, they're, doing, they're throwing the whole thing at him, everything. And they call you up. So I get a call from the emergency room. One of my colleagues who's covering the ER, the general surgeon, he's like, hey, you know, you know, well, first of all, he called the residents who worked under me. And they called and said, Doc, hey, we got a patient here with ascending cellulitis. Now, there's, again, there's a difference between ascending and localized. Localized, you can give you some antibiotics. IV antibiotics. Uh, you know, and you can go home and... Eight to 12 weeks, usually. Yeah, you can go home, ascending cellulitis, no. I, it was about 9, 10 o'clock I got a call. And I always return, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go in the hospital, I'm going to be there in an hour, or within the hour. When I talk, talk to the guy, how bad, well, first of all, the nurse called, since it was a nurse. And the nurse called um, before the resident, I talked to the resident. And I said, what's really going on? So they're like, well, this, 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 and that. So I asked the nurse in the ER, who I had a good relationship with, do you think I need to be there tonight, or is something we can He asked the nurse that. that. And this is why you guys are very important. I said before, maybe last week, you guys are there with those patients, so you guys have a good idea. So I said, it's something I need to do tonight because I'm a bit tired. I already <laughs> tried hospital already. And it's beside the office, and I might have been in surgery earlier that day. So she was like, it doesn't look very good. So I said, put the resident on the phone. I said, what do you think? He said, Doc, we got to do this tonight. So then they tell me, the so ascending is going up between the emergency room and by the time I got there, within two hours, less than two hours, within two hours, I believe, mm -hmm. it went from the dorsum of the foot going up the leg. And I guarantee you, between before morning, he would have been dead because now he's about to go into septic shock. Mm -hmm. So I call anesthesia. They don't want to come in. So now it's an ego thing now. So I pull Small up. hospital. Anesthesia's not at every hospital all day. I, you got to know like, that. They're like, well, can we do it early in the morning? And I just had to doctor the doctor. We just had to go there. This patient about to die. He won't be on my watch. And we about to do this. So make a long story short, anesthesia. I called the head of anesthesia. They came in. Yeah. And they had a poor rank and saved this guy's life. Now, what I did surgically, what we do is an IND, incision and drain drainage. So we open up that wound. IND, incision and drainage. So we don't pack that one. You guys are going to be doing a lot of that, talk about packing the nose mm -hmm. and all of that. You, you can't put a suture on an infected wound. You're going to so learn that in about 20 minutes. You cannot so, close it up. So, we, you know, the thing was to open it up, let it drain. So what I wanted to do was save his limb and ultimately save his life. But I guarantee you it was moving that fast that between... 10, 11 o'clock at night, and by 6 a.m., he would have been dead. So that's what I wanted to just put forth to you guys quickly how fast that can change. So you guys got to be alert. And you got to be knowledgeable alert. about who's immunocompromised. Extremely DMARDs, alert. biological drugs, steroid use. Yeah, it's not just your diabetics. It's you got to know their medications. What do those medications really mean to you? Are they on Humira? Are they on Orencia? Are they on Enbrel? Do their drugs end in M, A, B? Those are things you got to know. That's why you got to know your drugs. And all those things are extremely important, but you cannot overlook the fact that cellulitis, I mean, the localized type, it's, again, it's localized, so it's confined to an area. You can treat that 
Oh, I'll catch you there next week. Take some antibiotics and, you know, you do your workup and I'll see you. Ascending cellulitis, no. It constitutes a surgical emergency. So, you know, you're going to have to argue with your doctors. <laughs> you're going to have to argue with other nurses. You're going to have to argue with your residents. And if, if the surgical residents are, well, the surgical residents, like we gave up, always aggressive. They don't want to give me OR anyway. That's why I asked the nurse. You know, like the attendant, like, I'm like, hey, but the fact is, you have to pull rank. And I had to pull rank, not to the doctor. I had to call it, you know, I had a big ego, so. I, you know, but this is my patient. I didn't care about that. You have to go there, and Shelly tells you all the time, you got to, you got to, your patient comes first. So what I had to do, I'm calling the head of anesthesia because, yes, oh, well, you know, I don't want to come in, whatever. We can do it in the morning. I'm like, uh-uh, this patient going to be dead by 6 o'clock. So who's going to be sued? It won't be on my wife. In over 20 years, I've never been sued. But these are the things that you had to, but the thing, person I called, was the nurse. I talked to the nurse at first. What do you think? What if she was stupid? You know, but she knows she Well, it's just a little bit of an ulcer on the foot. You know how diabetics are. They kind of get those. What if she was stupid? What if she didn't really understand tachycardia is systemic? What if she didn't understand that this patient is not seen well? It has been there a while. The only reason they're in is because the shoe didn't fit and the wife drug them in. And the vitals is now is off the chart. So even with all those things. Blood pressure low. All those things are off, and I'm still having to battle with other doctors because it's a team approach. We mm -hmm. got to get this done, and then the is going to tell me, well, maybe we can wait in the morning. Yeah, it's crazy. So you guys are going to have to advocate and battle with other health care workers to get your job done. So now, well, I'm the nurse, the doctor said X, Y, Z. Something got to go over his head. Chain of command. You know, as long as you know what you're doing, like you said earlier, person who, you know, the nurse who did the uh, did good documentation, mm -hmm. she saved the hospital, well, yeah, she, she saved did. herself from mm -hmm. that perspective, so you mm -hmm. fell on the patient. But so you guys not just, well, I'm the nurse, no. He, the said, doctor said, that ain't what he ordered, well, he ordered this, you're still in charge. You have no said, idea how much you're in charge. Life, you got to stand by it, but at the, the same token, the uh, when you see it, you have to stay steadfast in what you believe in to be right and to be true. And it's not about, well, I don't want to rub her the wrong way or him the wrong way. It's not personal. It's not personal. It's about your patient first. Forget all the, well, Politics. I like him or I like her. I don't care less who like me. <laughs> as long as my patient loves me, that's what I care about. So it's always about the patient. It always be about your patient. And if you're not doing that, you need to go do something else. <laughs> Said in the only way he knows how. <laughs> you can see why we're friends for 20 some odd years. Okay, so there you go. Now we're going to continue and talk about some of these vaccines, um, diseases that have such common vaccines in the uh, childhood stage. You are never going to remember all of this. That's why you have to study it and come to toe to toe. Diphtheria, I do have tricks to help you a little bit, but diphtheria is a childhood disease, and what we tell you in toe-to-toe -to -toe is to remember all your Ds for diphtheria. D for diphtheria, D for DTAP, the vaccine itself, D for deadly, D for dull, and this is the most important, dull gray membrane in the back of the throat. Dull gray membrane in the back of the throat. D for damage to the heart. D for dysphagia, if I didn't say it already. D for droplet precautions. A lot of flipping Ds, huh? And that's how we remember it. The only thing that doesn't get a D is the drug. And the drug is typically erythromycin or something to treat it. But deadly is something you care about, obviously. 
So when children come in and they can't swallow, and of course, like I said before, we don't see as much of this, but maybe this patient has migrated from another country. Maybe this is a family who does not believe in vaccines for one reason or another. You could see this. Uh, you get so many booster shots. You get like five of these shots. Uh, DTAP, DTAP or TDAP or DTAP. We used to call it TDAP. Uh, but DTAP, diphtheria, tetanus, and pertussis, TDAP for the adult, okay? Now, pertussis, which is right up underneath it, P for pertussis, P for a type of pneumonia as a complication. P for pertussis, P for like pneumonia for the complication. With pertussis, there's another name. And the other name is what? Whooping, Whooping cough. cough. You may have seen a commercial about this. If you were pregnant in the last year or pregnant now, you were targeted for the vaccine. I am a grandmother, and my primary care and I have been friends like Dr. Jones for years. And so he said, oh, yeah, you got a grandbaby coming, don't you? I'm like, yes. Y'all got a name yet? Yes, Bryce Alexander. It was a toss-up between Mason and Bryce. He said, mm-hmm, you're getting a shot. Oh, no, the hell I ain't. I don't do flu vaccines. I ain't say a flu vaccine. You getting a shot. What am I getting? You're getting DTAP. You got a grandbaby on the way. Chances are you're going to be with them. Of course chances are because my daughter was having complications. So I moved her in, paid her rent at our apartment or whatever till she could get back. And so, yeah, he was right. I needed the stupid freaking vaccine. Don't forget that. Daycare providers, grandmothers, caregivers, pregnant women, not just children for this vaccine. We give it to the pregnant women in hopes that it will cross the placenta and go to the breast milk. And it will provide the baby upon birth some serious protection. So it can cross the placenta, go right to baby, and also be in the breast milk. The antibodies are always in the first three days of breast milk, it's called colostrum. I gave you that for free. Antibodies in the first three days of breast milk, which is called colostrum. Three days protects for 10 years. Okay, a lot of the antibody coverage takes place for about 10 years. Okay, so you got it going on. Now watch what I did here. This is complex. You should know by now that we give a vaccine called MMR. Y'all all right? Okay, but look what I did. I put an X on one of the M's. What do those letters stand for? measles, mumps, and rubella. I put an X on one of the M's because what are we talking about? We're talking about droplet precautions, but we have to be careful because even though this is one vaccine, it's three different diseases and they're not all the same precautions. For instance, measles is in a club all by itself over here but mumps and rubella fit comfortably under droplet. Now, this measles, mumps, rubella is one shot for vaccine purposes, but three different diseases, and we've had outbreaks of all of them except for rubella, and we are knocking on wood because that's the worst one. For measles, we went from Disneyland to all over the land. We have had this outbreak. Again, it's airborne. For mumps, my daughter saw many of her uh, associates at Ohio State running around with rosy cheeks and big, huge parotid glands, swollen, okay? Because this person, we have a trick for you for mumps. We say lumps in, and bumps in the cheeks like chipmunks. So it's as if you took all the different um, nuts out there that chipmunks want to put in their jaws and you just stuff the patient's jaws with nuts like acorns all this crap and it's lumps and bumps in the cheeks like chipmunks because the cheeks in front of the ear and below the ear these are where your parotid glands are all of this is very very swollen this child is in pain they can't swallow they got the high grade fever da 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 right now there's rosy cheeks, all this nonsense. Now, the mumps patient, for the gentleman, for the little boy, the risk is sterility. Sometimes on your test, you'll see orchitis. 
This is when your anatomy and your medical terminology come into play. Because if you think of orchi, it means testicle. Orchitis, swollen testicles. We call it um, swollen jaws and balls. Because we all know how to talk half the damn time to y'all. So it's swollen jaws and balls. Now that's what's going on with this patient. And that's what you've got to take to the test. Swollen jaws and balls, okay? You'll be fine if you just go ahead and remember it like that. And this patient with the swollen jaws and balls, okay? Uh, there's no treatment, really. It's self-limiting. A lot of these childhood diseases are self-limiting. Pertussis and diphtheria are treated, but measles, mumps, rubella, they're self-limiting. Uh, pertussis and diphtheria are treated with the same thing, typically, erythromycin, Pertussis, the complication is pneumonia. I told you that. All right, now rubella is tricky, big time, because rubella has more than one name. What is the other name for rubella? German measles. German measles. There's another name. What is it? Three-day three day measles. So German measles, three-day measles, rubella. That's a pain in your ass, but you got to know all three names. This is very rare. We have literally successfully treated this almost at the point of eradication, which means we'll never see it in the US. Almost. But then we got this core group of people that don't vaccinate. So we didn't get there yet. Now, so when we think about rubella, why on God's green earth did I say it was the worst one of all of them? Teratogen. Mm-hmm, teratogen. It has done catastrophic things to the unborn child, including death. And so rubella is contagious, um, but we just don't see it. But it is contagious and very catastrophic to pregnant women. We check for rubella immunity when the patient is pregnant, all patients. We don't give the vaccine to pregnant women, do we? Or immunosuppressed patients, or children under one years of age. So we're very strict with this vaccine. We put it in your mind, in order for you to remember it better, we put it in a song. We always say, measles, mumps, rubella, varicella, woo! So you will remember, not the woo, but the <laughs> measles, the mumps, the rubella, and the rubella. Because, here's why, you want to walk into your test singing. Because if you remember the measles, mumps, rubella, varicella song, you'll know all of those are called attenuated vaccines. Attenuated or live vaccines. We cannot give them to everybody. Nobody immunocompromised, nobody pregnant, no child over one. Okay, so think outside the box. Maybe it's a two year old with AIDS. Maybe it's a kidney transplant adolescent. You gotta be careful. Maybe the patient was treated for cancer six months ago. So, still immunocompromised. Okay, so you got it. You got it going on.